What's good, fam? Adam Frater here. I'm about to show you the 10 best exercises if you're trying to start calisthenics, exercises you can do right at home. If you're not already subscribed or following me, go ahead and do that. Let's dive right in. All right, so the first exercise I'm gonna start off with could actually be 10 or 20 different exercises because once you nail down the perfect form, and if you're a beginner, once you build that strength to do one perfect push-up, there's so many variations that you can do. So the first exercise is a push-up, but don't skip forward in the video because most people that are beginners actually don't know how to do a push-up. Now I did a video on this before that talks about the scapula and how you need to have strength in here and every push-up shouldn't be just like this. So that's one thing to focus on the scapula, but the most important thing showing strength across your entire body is the chain. Your body's a chain. So quads, abs, your entire front line, your back line, I'll dive into that in other videos, but basically this isn't an arm workout. Some people let the chain droop. They don't have tight abs, so they end up just doing an arm workout like this. And if your first push up looks like this, where you're struggling and you're just trying to push, you're only really doing triceps off the ground. A push up, you're supposed to engage your glutes, which is your ass, your core, and pull that stomach in and get into push up form. Now, if you're a beginner in calisthenics, the reason this is important is it's not about being able to do 20 reps of a push-up. It's about being able to have the strength across your entire frame and that stability. Being able to push yourself 20 times off the ground like this isn't gonna get you anywhere, but being able to be in strong core strength position, here I can hold, I'm engaged along my entire line, and from here I can do either a normal push-up I can do a fly push-up that targets more chest. I can do a diamond push-up that targets more triceps. I can do a pseudo planche push-up where my shoulders come over my hands. Then I come down here, more shoulders. There's so many variations for a push-up. That's why it's most important to nail that form in a push-up. If you're trying to build up to a perfect push-up, two options. Put a band around your waist and over a pull-up bar, to take some of your weight off or just put your knees down and there's nothing wrong with your knees the best part about your knees is you can start from here or you can walk forward so your knees are just like this and instead of letting your stomach sink still pull in those core and try to build that core strength like this i'm still tucked and that's exercise one all right the second exercise is going to start to allow you to play with inversions meaning to get upside down and hopefully that's everybody's goal if you're a beginner in calisthenics, maybe a handstand, headstands, um, or a variation of those. So you can start off with a headstand. Now my favorite headstand is a three-point hold. You basically make a triangle, hands here and your head in front of your hands. Now you can start this by putting your knees on your elbows and practicing just the balance like this, or you can slowly work your way into getting into either a straddle, which is easier, or completely straight. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of headstands because they put pressure on your spine and like it doesn't actually teach you the balance of holding all of the, the weight on your hands, but it is a great progression to get to the next step, which would be to do a crow hold, which you might know from yoga and I'm going to do a variation of it. It's not going to be the best yoga move, but your knees go on the back of your elbows. You get up on your toes and you slowly start to sink your weight forward. My hands are really gripping the ground and this I take off one foot at a time and now I'm balancing. Now this is what got me to eventually doing the handstand because next, as you build up the strength, what you're gonna realize is as you do those holds, you're building a lot of forearm strength. That's really necessary in adjusting yourself when you learn the handstand. When you start to build up strength, eventually when you progress beyond being a beginner, you'll take a crow and be able to take your knees off or be able to do it without your knees on at all. So just doing that hover would then eventually be the next step. And eventually one day you might be strong enough for the handstand push up, push all the way up into handstand. All right, this next exercise is wall climbers. Also will help you progress for a handstand, will help you build push up strength, will help you build shoulder strength. And most importantly, it's gonna help you build strength across your entire core. We're gonna do wall climbers. So you're not gonna do a handstand push up against the wall. Instead, you're gonna get in the push up position. You're gonna take one foot, step on the wall, and start to walk your feet while walking your hands. And what you're doing is every time you push with your hand, shoulder, 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 shoulder. Now I'm upside down. Now as I walk down, what I don't do is I don't arch like this. 
I stay strong in the core. This core strength is gonna be what's really necessary in building my calisthenics journey. And I walk down, again, my core is engaged, my shoulder blades are engaged, my wrists are engaged, my legs are engaged. I come down, throw in an extra credit push-up, and I go back into the next rep. And the reason, again, that exercise is so amazing is because everything that's being worked in unison, and that's the strength you need for calisthenics. All right, so now this next exercise goes along with the wall climbers. It's a piece of it, but something that you should train by itself. Now, I call these stability holds. So walk your feet up until you're at an angle. At this angle, go ahead and get your hands as far away from you as is comfortable, and then hold. Then squeeze. Now, you don't need strength in the sense of being able to curl, bench press, squat a lot of weight. What you need, and I keep reiterating this, is strength in the stability across everything. Maybe your abs are strong, but your abs where they connect to your quads, you don't have the ability to be strong across here. So you can crunch, you can pivot at the waist, but you can't stay in a perfect plank. When your hands are above you instantly, most people want their back to arch. So a lot of people do this exercise and they kind of just start to arch. The idea is to get strong here. This is the strength you need. So that strength is your anterior core chain. But basically, you wanna be able to move your spine with your abs to here while you're holding yourself stable. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna help you in every movement from pull-ups to push-ups and especially handstands. This next exercise focuses on the core strength that I just explained from the stability holds. And what you're gonna do first is lay down, and I showed this in another one of my videos, if you lay with your hands above your, your head, naturally because your shoulders are tight, this pulls your rib cage up, your ribs flare out, and your lower back starts to arch. So the core strength you want is to be able to tuck those ribs and press your lumbar into the ground. Now from here, the exercise that I'm gonna show you is slow jackknives. So lift your heels, Make sure you're in the room. Lift your heels, hands overhead, and you can just hold. So for beginners, true beginners, do your best just to hold. If you want to reduce the difficulty, just bring your knees in and come up. The idea is your shoulder blades are not touching, just your lower back and your tailbone, and from here you can start to open up. And if you want to make the exercise more difficult, you come in, do a crunch, try to compress. Compress means to come together as much as possible. When I say compress, it's Get your spine from here, pull your knees in, and use your core to compress. That's what's really important in calisthenics. So this movement, the slow jackknife, you're here, come in, compress, and back out. Moving on the legs, the squat jump. Now if you're a beginner, like a true beginner, you might just wanna work with the body weight squat first, focusing on not letting your knees come in, staying on your feet, toes gripped into the ground, not letting your knees sink over your toes. That's perfect form for a bodyweight squat. What we're gonna do is squat jumps. So basically, you start here, bring your arms down as if you're playing in a sport like basketball, volleyball, you're gonna explode. From here, you drive up with the hands, straight up, jump, explode up, land into a squat. You don't have to land that low. But the idea is you don't jump and then land and take the impact, you land and absorb the impact slowly while using your muscles to slow yourself down, change direction, and drive back up. This is what they look like. Down, explode up, land, absorb. Explode up, land, absorb. Explode up, hands come down, hands explode. Now what you're doing here is every time you change direction, you're using your leg muscles. What I don't wanna see is if you're weak, you explode too high, you land and you bounce, like that. You don't want your calves and your ass to touch terrible for your knee joints, and it just shows a weakness in strength, which is why you're cheating and doing it that way. So try to hit the brakes at 90 degrees, explode back up. All right, next leg variation, split jumps. Now this is a great movement if you're trying to increase speed, vertical, it's a little bit more dynamic. So we come down into lunge position. Left foot's up, right leg's back. When your left foot is up, your right hand is up. Always opposite. Your left hand is back. This is how runners do or this is running form. So now if your right leg comes forward, your left hand would. So we start like this, bring that knee off the ground. We're just gonna jump up as high as we can and switch. Jump up and switch. 
Now, as you get better, you can extend the straddle and land like this. If you're a little bit weaker, just land here. Start here. And by weaker, I mean on your journey to getting stronger. And we switch it up. And you'll feel that in your quads, in your hip flexors. And what's great about these movements is anything that engages a leg and brings your leg up is engaging your core. That's how you're gonna get a shredded core, how you're gonna increase your speed and be a better athlete overall. Next up is the step up. Now, you've seen this movement at the gym, and this is another great one that has tons of variations. Step up is simple again, right leg's up, left arm's up, you do opposites. Left leg comes up, right arm comes up. Stop here. Now, in full motion, it looks like this. Oh, I have to kill myself on the chair. Put this on a carpet, do this on a bench. Obviously, be careful. But up, fire. What's happening? This leg is engaging. This leg is driving off of the toes, that's a calf. And every time this knee comes up, this core is engaging to fire that leg up. Now, if that is too much, the way you change the difficulty of this exercise is by having a lower platform or putting the other leg on something. Now I don't have to step up as high. That's it, boom. Don't have to step up as high. Or, if I wanna make it even harder, this can go up even higher. And what happens is when this is higher, imagine I was all the way down here, I'd have to use more range of motion to get that leg up. Now when you get good at this, the reason this can be so many different exercises, this is probably gonna go everywhere on this carpet. But you can do things like over, boom, boom, boom. These are explosive athlete workouts. You can go up. Lots of different things you can do if you're a beginner. Great way to start training your legs with body weight, build coordination, build endurance, and build strength. All right, next is hanging knee raises. Now I talked a lot about that compression strength. When doing hanging exercises, they're my favorite core exercise specifically because of this point. So get a good hang. From here, you wanna let down, like really let your scapula, your shoulder blades relax. Let your legs hang. Don't let your ribs flare out though. Go ahead and tuck your ribs. So engage your core a little bit. And from here, you wanna bring your, your knees up. Now this is the beginner level, right? Just being able to come to here. But what you're noticing is my spine is still like this with my legs up. To use that compression core strength, you wanna be able to come to here. Get your spine to start to hollow out. So you really wanna work. The exercise we're doing is knee tuck compression. So your knees come to here. And if you can, the next part is to get them to here and then really try to get them up so you're nice and compressed. I'll try to do it from the side so you can kind of see, but you're here. See the difference in my spine? It's rounded as opposed to being here with my knees up. So you want to get that compression uh, strength. What that's going to allow you to do is slowly unfold into a handstand, hold a planche, hold a front lever, hold a back lever, do stronger push-ups. Shit, do absolutely everything. That compression strength is everything in calisthenics. Enough with the glamour muscles. Having abs is great, but they're useless if you don't have that compression strength. This is part of your abs, but your abs also have a back line. Your core is not just the front of your abs, it's everywhere. So work on those compression knee tucks. So then this next exercise is body weight row. So maybe you don't have a pull-up bar to do pull-ups at home, although everybody should get the doorway type of pull-up bar. And maybe you don't have these either, but you can do this on the end of two chairs, and you can also do this on the end of your kitchen table. Basically, get yourself flat, hands above you, and your hands can be right here in line with your shoulder, and simply pull up. You're not just pulling your chest up, you're not pulling up like this. Nice flat back, using your core, pull up. If that's too hard as a beginner, just bend your knees. Just bend your knees from here. There's a good beginner progression. To work on one leg as you get stronger. And then, if you wanna make it harder because that gets too easy, add another chair, platform, something else, get your feet up, pull yourself. And what you're noticing is the, the, the more difficult I make it, I'm starting to pull the bar to my waist instead of to my shoulder. So if you really wanna make it difficult, again, start to pull the bar down, because this is gonna use more lat. That's like a lat pull down like that. So again, a lot of variations with this workout as well. Always ways to make things harder. All right, so that just about does it. There's 10 different exercises for beginners in calisthenics that you can start with right away. Hopefully you guys liked 
this video. Hopefully you like all my other videos. I finally got my channel up and going, so hit me in the comments if there's a specific subject you'd like to see. Always trying to improve. Smash like is what they say. Hit subscribe. Do all that good stuff. More content coming to you soon. See you on the next one.